Undercurrent sponsored by John Hughes in Victoria Park. Choose your station before you choose your program. Absolutely. Hello and welcome back to Undercurrent in this rather chilly week here in Perth. Well, next up, Miles Riley takes a closer look at the law surrounding forced marriages here in Australia, or perhaps that is the lack of laws. The issue of forced marriage in Australia was thrust into the spotlight in 2011 when a 16-year-old girl went to court to prevent her parents from sending her to Lebanon for an arranged marriage. As a result, more and more victims are speaking out about their experiences. In response, the federal government has introduced new legislation seeking to criminalise the practice. The federal government has flagged new laws to make it an offence to use threatening or intimidation or even violence um, to force somebody um, into a marriage. It's an important piece of law uh, because it sends a message to both the people who might perpetrate that, that forcing someone into, uh, into a marriage is not acceptable. It's important to recognise that there's a difference between arranged marriages and forced marriages. Um, arranged marriages still occur amongst uh, some cultural groups where the families will um, bring their son and daughter together um, to see if there's a connection and uh, if that works out well and both the, the young man and the young woman agree, then the marriage may well proceed. Any partnership that is entered into needs to be entered into with the full consent of one or both parties. And when it comes to arranged marriages, it's entirely possible that when it gets to the point where the couple decide to go ahead with the relationship, it's mutually consented. In contrast to that, in forced marriages, um, the couple, one or both, is entering into something against them. The numbers seem to suggest it's not a huge practice in Western Australia, but there have been um, a couple of high profile cases nationally. In particular, a 17 year old young woman who was taken on what she thought was a holiday to Pakistan by her father, uh, and there was confronted with the fact that she was going to be forced into a marriage. Arranged marriage, it's within our cultural context. And the rationale behind that is really that uh, Intimacy as social norm is only allowed after marriage. So we do not have premarital sex or dating to that extent where boy and girl understand each other. In our culture, marriage is between really two families, not just two individuals. So it's very important that they understand each other before even they introduce the two couples. The common notion is that if you want to keep your husband happy, keep his family happy. Because again, all of them, if there are six or seven members in the family, they won't change because of the girl. Girl has to make changes in her behaviour. At home, she may not ask parents if she's going out with friends. When it is at husband's place, she has to ask. Become who we are on the basis of the culture in which we grow up. What we learn about what's okay, what's not okay, what results in shame, what results in affirmation shapes who we become and all of those things have been different for the generations that have done that growing up perhaps in another country away from Australia. The forced marriage and uh, quite a popular actually is uh, used in Australian terms is a marriage of a convenience is for solely for the purpose of gaining permanent residency. Forced marriage is where the consent is not there for the girl or boy. Both of them. In arranged marriage, they still consent, but they leave their fate at the hand of the parents or their family. I don't think there is an increase in forced marriage the way I see it. It's more about the awareness now. So people are raising their voices. It would be happening earlier as well, but we were not seeing these cases. But now it's coming into the media, it's coming into the, le the legislation is now coming. So that is why the increase in. As the conversation comes, more and more into the daily lives of Australians through the media. We all see recent programs on television around this topic. It's been in the press. There's an increased awareness. Now when awareness is raised, sometimes what happens is it isn't so much that it's happening more often, but people feel that they can talk about what's going on for them. 
the more we talk about these things and the more that shows like yours shine a light on this sort of practice, it will tell those people involved, whether it's the young women, um, that they can speak up and out to the authorities about this. We may not know for sure that forced marriage in Australia is on the rise, but what is becoming increasingly apparent is that the more issues like these are discussed in the media, the more people are willing to speak out about what is happening to them. This is Miles Riley reporting for Undercurrent. Well, I'm very happy to say that the city of Perth seems to be ever changing at the moment. I mean, take a look at these buildings just behind me. Recently revamped and recently unveiled. They look stunning, but this week the city of Perth saw something truly extraordinary as part of the opening of the Winter Arts Festival. The city saw snow. Miles Riley reports. Well, winter is officially here and what better way to celebrate than with the launch of Perth City's winter art season. With over 150 offerings from more than 60 different leading and emerging local arts organisations, this is set to be the biggest winter art season in the history of the festival. The uh, Perth winter art season is running all throughout Perth, all throughout winter. There's something there for everybody from literature, arts, music, theatre, whatever you're into, there's something for everybody. There's uh, over 150 events from over 60 participating um, local arts organisations and touring ones as well. Um, so we've got some huge stuff happening this weekend, kicking off with Whammy and um, State of the Art for WA Day, which used to be Foundation Day, is having a huge concert at Perth Concert Hall with lots of um, local band stages and inside there'll be bands like Hoodoo Gurus and Eskimo Joe and Jebediah and all that kind of thing. So um, exciting! <laughs> we didn't know it was going to be happening, so it's a nice surprise. Lovely, it's great to see so many artists out doing things that you don't see every day. It's really good, makes the city feel like it's alive. Of course we've got um, snow in Murray Street Mall today, which is really, really fun. We've got firing hula hoop performers and aerial performers. and The snow! Yeah, the snow is pretty cool. <laughs> well, um, I have a company specialised in snow, snow events, artificial snow events and real snow events. And uh, winter, snow, what's better than that? We're here really to promote our season which is about to come up. We're from West Australian Academy of Performing Arts and um, we have a season in August at the Dolphin Theatre at UWA. So we're here to promote that. I mean, the city never stops. People I speak to on the East Coast saying, oh, so we're here, you've just had this huge comedy festival and, and now this is happening. And I'm like, yeah, just because the rain starts falling or the snow, as it were, starts falling, doesn't mean all the artists go to sleep. We're known for sleepy old wait a while Perth, so it's about time we sort of got back up there with everybody else and, and um, made our city a shining star. Perth is more, it's a really great um, city for people to like ask to create our own work and showcase it and put it on. So we're only yeah. new to Perth, so it's nice to find out all these these things that are gonna be happening around town. Happened to be passing by and I just stopped because my daughter wants to swatch. Ah. So we aren't really we weren't really aware of this, but just watching because it's nice. Uh, a city like Perth is uh, uh, a world class city in my opinion and I'm coming from Europe, uh, so I can tell that. And uh, definitely the level of the events is growing and they should keep going in this way. Probably a little bit more music festivals going on, that would be nice, something for all ages, something for little kids as well as older people, that would be nice. I'd love to see some more music and things in the city as well. Something that could bring everyone together, a bit of variety. Yeah, all ages as well, instead yeah. of just like a certain genre rather than just family. Yeah few younger generations, few older, why not? Um, hmm. And probably some better publicity of these events because sometimes we don't find out about them until they're right on top of us. Just go outside and you'll find something. There's even 24 hour exhibitions on in the city um, in a couple of the laneways that are all lit up at night. So there's no excuse. Whether you're into live performance or the visual arts, film or something free and for the family, Perth City's winter art season is guaranteed to have something for everyone. The festival runs until the 31st of August and for more details visit www.showmeperth.com.au. This is Miles Riley reporting for Undercurrent. Well, next up on Undercurrent, we are very pleased to invite Mr. Nick Hayes back onto our screens and he'll be having a chat with Sunday Times writer William Gale. Gale, thanks for joining Undercurrent. 
What's the state of the restaurant business here in Western Australia? Are we in a healthy position? Well, I think that uh, the restaurant industry at the moment is disgustingly healthy. It's amazing. It was sick, very sick for quite some time. When I first started, um, if a, a new restaurant opened up, everyone would get very excited about it. We'd probably get a, a new one about once every three months. But now what's happening is there seems to be a new restaurant opening every week. Mm. And literally, I was skipping down the street last Friday night because I was so excited about what's happening in Perth. Because we've seen the days of no one going out in Perth. You mm. could shoot a gun down St George's Terrace. Yeah. And just last Friday night, um, there were people spilling out of all the bars and new restaurants. What is it that makes a good restaurant? Is it the ambience? Is it the food? It's a combination of everything, really. And it starts with ambience. Um, and a restaurant can have a great ambience. We do know of a few restaurants around the place that have fantastic views and they have well-dressed staff. They have all, they tick all the right boxes in that area, but if you haven't got the good food, um, they're not going to get people going there. And as I said about the, um, the number of restaurants opening up now, there's so many of them, and I do wonder whether there's enough people to support them, because uh, there have been some that I've been to the openings of recently, and I've gone back a, two, a couple of days later, the restaurant's empty. When you're writing for the Sunday Times, are you aware of the effect that it can have on a restaurant? It can make and break it? Very conscious, yeah, very. I mean, I've had some things happen during restaurant reviews and I have realised, oh look, I can't go back five times because we just can't afford to do that. So you have to weigh that into the review. I don't want to get a reputation as being the most feared critic in Perth. I'd like to get the reputation as being the fairest critic. I try to put my experience into context and hope the reader looks at it and can perhaps read between the lines. And I don't, I don't think that I'd actually like to be able to say on my CV, oh look, I was responsible for a restaurant closing down because of one bad experience. Well, Gail, we're at Sweet Lips Fish and Chips in Leaderville. Probably not the normal restaurant that you would be reviewing, but let's go and critique some of the food. Can't wait. I hope you didn't have lunch. I did, actually. Did you? Doesn't matter. <laughs> so what are we looking for in the fish? I'm looking for a very thin batter, and a batter that actually sticks to the fish, yeah. not that comes off. Um, and falls apart, that's not good at all. Um, because when you bite into it, you want the crispness of the outside, contrasting with the soft texture of the fish. Did you give it a squeeze of lemon? That makes all the difference. Well, Gail, thanks for joining Undercurrent and giving us a bit of an insight into the life of a food critic. I think we've done all right here today. We've had a ball, haven't we? Yeah. That is really good. Seriously good. Well, that brings us to the end of another week of Undercurrent. Thankfully, I've managed to brave my way through the episode without turning into an icicle, but I can't let you go without reminding you about our WTV VIP membership drive, where we're calling on you to become a WTV member and help support your local community TV station. And you will also see us out and about having sausage sizzles at many and varied establishments here in Western Australia. So make sure you come on over and say hello. I'm Christy Mollica. I'll catch you next week for more of Western Australia's very own undercurrents. Undercurrents sponsored by John Hughes in Victoria Park. Choose your station before you choose your program. Absolutely.